Hello everyone, and it is quite late in the afternoon that I'm filming this. I just got up late and yeah. I slept in a bit this morning when I tried to get myself out and film this morning, but it was a grey day anyway, so I've got a light on so you can still see me. Um, today, Prognerd Reviews, episode 7, and this time I'm doing a review on a band and an album that I'd never heard of until it was suggested by you guys, and I saw it on a list of like best prog songs and one of the songs on that album was featured in that video and so I just decided to check out the album because I liked the little clip of music that they put in and yeah I just thought you know what I'll review this and it was a very good album uh it reminded me of like early rush but not the first album more like fly by night where it was like the music was hard rock inspired definitely um, and so were the lyrics. So they were less kind of proggy lyrics. There were moments where they were quite proggy lyrics, but I think the music was more of the proggy aspect. Um, so just a little bit about this group. They're called Wigmam, interesting name, and they're from Finland. And this album came out in 1975, so just as prog was peaking. And um, yeah, do I own it on vinyl? Sadly, I do not have this one on vinyl. I'm gonna try and source it out somewhere because I really liked the album. And I will get into that as I go on through my review. But this was a great album and I will probably get it on vinyl for my next haul as well to include. So let's just get into the review. There is not too many songs on this album, but there is quite a lot. And I didn't write too much about each one because there wasn't too much to digest in each one uh, in terms of like parts, you know, like with some of the other stuff that I've reviewed, for example, with the... Uh, my first review, Omadon, which was just one, um, like, let, for example, let's take the first track. There was just so much to break down in that track because it was like multiple different sections in one track. But uh, in this particular album, there was no sign of like multiple parts in the track. By that, I mean something like Bohemian Rhapsody or Paranoid Android, where they've got lots of different, well, not lots, like a few different sections pushed into one song. Um, so let's just start with the track breakdowns. So, so the first track is the title track of the album, Nuclear Nightclub. That is the name of the records. I forgot to mention that. The name of the album is Nuclear Nightclub by Wigwan. So the title track, um, I liked the bass tone on this record and the bass lines throughout the track. Um, this particular track from my perspective felt less like a prog track and more of like a classic rock track like that's why I, why I compared it to Fly By Night because it felt less of a prog track and more of like a hard rock track but it definitely had prog undertones in it um I really liked the vocalist's voice and it suited the type of song that they were going for um I liked the guitar tone and the use of um, guitar effects always goes well in the in my books you know a bit of variation here and there not just one sticking to one particular guitar tone and again lyrics suited the music and yeah overall great track um great intro to the album that's about to come next track is freddy are you ready uh this one had more of a progressive rock feel to it so whereas the first track was more of like a hard rock track mixed with prog this one was definitely more of the prog orientated feel uh great drum grooves great use of the um higher frequencies for example there was a lot of use getting a lot of use out of the hi-hats and the cymbals and basically what i've written down here is the overheads um so that was that was great great articulation on that particular part of the drum kit uh, great chords, progressions, very nice, nicely used, and I can see that th this track was very much inspired by Camel. Like, I could just tell right off the bat it was heavily inspired, I think. Uh, I could be wrong, but it definitely felt like a, a Camel-inspired track. Um, I liked the vocalist's vo voice in this particular track. It was uh, interesting, and I've written down here that it was charismatic like it was just very uh, you know like you know what i mean by charismatic like it just felt very just very interesting very cool 
suited the music and the nice. I liked the use of dynamics in this track. There were parts that were uh, oh, dynamic vocal range. Sorry, I've written down here. So there were parts where it was very loud, and there were parts where it was quite soft, which is something that I really like about um, about prog in general. Is where you can ha have a vocalist who can actually change their voice to be work with a very soothing track, a very mellow track, and then also work with something that's more aggressive and upbeat, which is a lot uh, featured a lot throughout this album. So the next track is Bless Your Lucky Stars. This was my favourite on the album, and I'll get to that when I conclude the uh, conclude the review. So I like how I've written here how playful and bouncy the bass guitar is. I'm not. I, d I did music theory for a bit, I don't really remember <laughs> um, the term for that, um, but I liked the uh, vocal effects that they put on in production and great guitar work all the way through this track. Um, I liked the use of string section, so I don't think that was... I, I really liked that, obviously it was used on some form of keyboards. Um, and it led into this kind of cool guitar riff that what I liked about it, it was go up and down in octaves. So it would go up like a couple of semitones and then like go. So what it would do is you'd have like the base of the, the actual key that the piece was in and it would go up semitones and then it would go back to that original one and then go down. And I thought that was so cool and I really loved that a lot. Powerful, strong bass guitar work throughout, great keyboard effects and guitar effects, probably my favourite track, and I love the guitar solo at the end, I love a good guitar solo, and the guitar tone throughout these solos that are on each of these tracks is so good, I, I really love that. So the next track is Kite, so great use of guitar effects at the beginning, it really felt like, a, now as I said, in a couple of tracks ago, it was very much camel inspired. This track felt very kind of Pink Floyd-esque, just by the way that the person was playing the guitar. It just felt very Gilmore-esque. And I thought that was worth noting because it just felt like a Pink Floyd track. Uh, great lyrics, uh, very interesting. Um, great guitar solo, great chords used, great chord progressions and um, as I said, feels very Pink Floyd inspired and I've got no problem with that because I love Pink Floyd a lot. I've got Pink Floyd poster over there. Um, I, yeah, one of the first progressive bands I got into was Pink Floyd. So uh, really nice, nice ending to the track. Really great track. I really like this one. Next, Do or Die. I liked the song title already uh, and a great intro to the track as well. Um, I love the throughout. This, uh, this is just a pointer about the whole album as a whole is that I love how the what separates us from being more classic rock inspired is the bass guitar being turned all the way up during production and that's something that I don't really see very much in classic rock it's kind of usually in the middle and either it's in the middle or you can't hear it very well unless you have a great set of speakers but in this album they've really turned up the bass guitar so you can hear all the bass lines and you can hear the bass guitar just wandering around in the background and that's what separates it from being a classic rock album to a progressive rock album because I did say that there was some progressive uh, some classic rock undertones and some classic rock elements throughout this album but what really se separates it is that emphasis on the bass guitar and the loudness of it so I really like that, of course, as I keep mentioning, I'm a bass player myself. I like hearing the bass guitar and so what I don't like about more modern... Well, when I was listening to more like emo music and alternative music is that you'll have a bass guitarist whose bass is usually not turned up very high and that kind of bothers me because it makes the albums and the songs sound a bit more tinny and less full on um but that's what i loved about being introduced to this kind of genre of music is hearing the bass guitar that's my point really is i want to be able to hear it because i want to be able to hear every instrument i don't want to just hear a guitar i don't want to hear a drum kit i don't want to just hear a 
a vocalist or a keyboard player, I want to hear the bass guitar and that's something that separates that from classic rock, from alternative rock, uh, if you can call it that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Anyway, going back to this track, great chorus, I liked the harmonies and um, drum grooves were awesome, especially the use of the hi-hat, that was very noteworthy. Uh, I found that the lyrics were a little bit on the cheesy side, but it worked. It didn't put me off at all. I just thought it was just a little bit. And another fantastic solo, which concludes the track. That's kind of like their mark that I've kind of heard throughout this album, is that they usually end tracks with a guitar solo. So I like that. They've really left their mark on that. Next up, Simple Human Kindness. Great flow of the track. I thought this track had a great flow to it. I liked the more progressive feel of this track. And um, I think that, I, as I mentioned before, I've written this down on this track, um, a lot of this album has a lot of prog elements, enough to be considered. So unlike Pink Floyd, who have more of a psychedelic approach to music, this group have the progressive elements, but it's just enough to be considered a progressive rock album. Whereas with Pink Floyd, they're just experimental, psychedelic, classic rock, all that kind of mixed in and prog, but not enough prog to be called a prog band. Um, but they had the classic rock influence on this album, um, Nuclear Nightclub, it had a lot of it, of the classic rock influences, but just about enough progressive rock influences to call it a prog album. So the keyboards, I think, and the bass line really saved it for me for being a prog album. I like the bounce piano, bounce piano parts, really like that. Uh, charismatic vocals, which I've written down here, reminds me of Van der Graaff Generator. I think that might have been another inspiration of theirs. There was some very Peter Hamill-esque vocal style going on in this track and in, I think, the uh, one of the first tracks on the album. Very good, I like that a lot. <laughs> That's not a bad thing at all. Um, great use of dynamics, I love the build up to the end and the solo again, another great solo. And as I mentioned before, the tone used on the guitar in these solos is very delicious, it's very great. Next up, Save My Money and Name. I think that's the name of the chat. Yep. So I like the variation in tempos throughout this record, um, well, this track in particular. Um, it was a lot slower in pace than the other tracks, which are a bit more upbeat. Um, but this particular track had a bit of a slower approach, which I like because I like an album that can variate in tempos. So you'll have something that's slower and then you'll have something that's really upbeat and then you have something in the middle and then all the different ranges, which I really do love. Um, great guitar, again, mentioning the guitar tone. And I've written down here that, um, what I like about this album a lot is the fact that every track is different. So not one of these tracks is the same as the other, which I really like about an album, but it's not messy in a way that's like, this is all out of place. Like, why is this track here? And why is this track here? Like this, there's no theme to this album, but I really think it worked with this record. And yeah, just thought that was worth mentioning and a great, it leads into the last track which uh, I really do like the name of this next track, um, Pigstorm. <laughs> uh, cool name, as I've written down. So this track was more of like, a, there was no vocals whatsoever. It was just, a, I think about five, four or five minute long jam. I'm a big fan of jamming in general, obviously. I mean, I have a lot of love for prog, which has big sections of just improvisation. And this is so cool. I love this track a lot. It was very, I, it was a perfect blend of like that classic jam feel, but then like prog as well, which put together was very good. Very talented musicians, of course, throughout this album and made for a very in exciting time. And guitar tone is tasty, as I've written down here. Fab guitar work flows very nicely and it was a great jam altogether. I, I think it was great. I like tracks that are just, instrumental and just improvisation it really works and i like how that's how the album ended it just ended on a jam and that was very cool and i like that a lot so my personal opinions i've kind of given them throughout the review as it is i really liked this record i haven't given it my personal opinions so i really like this record a lot i think that 
I it had the perfect blend of classic rock and hard and um and prog. I think it was just a great blend, great musicians, great guitar tone. I, the solos were absolutely fantastic. Great bass lines. Um if I had to say one thing that I didn't like so much were just the lyrics. Some of the lyrics I found a bit too cheesy and a bit too not to my liking, but that's could that's going to be different for someone else. Um Overall, I'd rate this album an 8 out of 10, because that's just on first listen. And my favourite track was Bless Your Lucky Stars, which was very fantastic. That was my favourite one. And I think that was the one uh, which had the small clip of audio that I could hear throughout. I keep thinking something's falling over in the background. Um, so that is the end of today's video. And next week's review will be... Let's have a look. Uh, I'm probably going to do another one that was... So I did that poll a couple of weeks ago. Um, or last week, not a couple of weeks ago. About what album I should review for this week. But I'm probably going to go back through them and just see what the next to least amount of voted was. And pick that one because I think the album with the least amount of views is obviously going to be the one that people haven't heard of as much and that album will be if I can find the piece of paper that I wrote it down on that would be very helpful Space Shanty by Khan which I know features um Steve Hillage on guitar so I, I have a lot of high hopes for that and yeah See you guys in that video on Friday. I will be doing a vinyl slash whatever community related video. It's going to be an unboxing on Friday. I just got in a new box set. If you don't follow, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen it by now. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to review it and just talk with you guys about the box set. And yeah, so Fridays will be stuff to do with vinyl, the vinyl community and unboxings. So that will be... Friday section whereas Wednesdays is going to be the review Monday will probably just be some sort of prog discussion and Saturday of course will be Saturdays with dad and there might be some reoccurring themes on the Saturdays with dad because I'm I did my video about concept albums on Monday and I wanted to do a similar video with my dad about concept albums so you can look forward to that and I will see you guys on Friday bye